Hello, welcome back to the Spectrosonics Omnisphere tutorial series. Today we're going to start diving into the oscillator and try to figure out how it makes its sound. And we're going to pick on the synth oscillator to start with. And we don't want any distractions, so we're going to throw absolutely everything away and get ourselves back to a really simple sawtooth wave. There it is, exactly the same as it appears in the picture. If you throw all of your other modulation and filter effects away, this little picture you see in the synth window is a genuine representation of the actual real world shape that's being generated. So this is a wavetable. The square saw bright is basically like wavetable number one. You can see five really, really basic wavetables available for use via these really convenient shortcuts. But from that point onwards, we have to drill into menus to get to them. Most of the wavetables that we deal with have got two shapes. So this is a sawtooth going to a square wave. And as you can see in the oscilloscope, These two shapes are always directly equivalent. That's the beauty of wavetables. It's not necessarily the ability to, to play this wave or this wave. It's the ability to cross over between these two things via a process called morphing. We are morphing from one wave to another. Now the maths behind how that process is accomplished is way beyond me. Let's just kind of mar marvel that that's giving us an almost infinite number of synthesized sounds just out of one single really, really simple option. But of course, wavetables go way beyond that. And some of the digital wavetables uh, contain more sounds. I think this one contains about eight. And you can see it morphing from one wave to the next as we go through the wavetable. So that's what the shape slider does. It allows you to vary the shape that's being generated by the processor. These, these waves are being generated in real time by this digital signal processor at the heart of the Omnisphere oscillator, the synth oscillator. And as we'll see in subsequent episodes, we're able to modulate almost every control inside Omnisphere. So we can actually automate this moving slider if we like and get this kind of sound. That's really classic wavetable territory when you start morphing quickly between multiple waves. The next control down gives us yet another perspective on our kind of palette of sonic variation. All of this stuff is all about how do we generate lots and lots of different sounds right at the very bottom of the hierarchy where the sound is generated by the oscillator has such a dramatic effect on everything that happens afterwards. We want flexible, sensible, real-world usable options, and that's what Omnisphere excels at. Everything is genuinely useful. There's no fat on this synth. Symmetry is a similar kind of thing. So, so there's the, the shape of the wave as it comes straight out of the wavetable. Again, really equivalent. As we start increasing the symmetry slider, you're gonna see the shape of the wave literally become more symmetrical. And all of those different shapes are resulting in different sounds. That's the only thing that we're really interested in. We've got all of this like massive array of, of sound palettes to play with. But there you go, asymmetrical wave. Again, absolutely no idea what the maths is behind it, but it's very beautiful. Hard sync is a throwback to analog days when it was pretty much impossible to get multiple oscillators inside a single analog synthesizer to behave themselves. They would all be wailing away in their own like mini micro world. And it was very, very, very difficult to get them all to synchronize together. So a, a, a specific feature was implemented in analog synthesizers called hard sync, which locks two oscillators together. And the way it does it is that it, it uses these concepts called a master and a slave oscillator. And 
the master basically forces the slave oscillator to begin redrawing its shape. So as soon as the master has finished one complete cycle of its wave, the slave begins to redraw its shape. And what this means is that those two oscillators are now absolutely locked together. Whatever the pitch of oscillator of the master oscillator is, is also the pitch of the slave oscillator. Now in Omnisphere, that process is accomplished by a hidden oscillator. HardSync has its own completely dedicated oscillator that we can't see, we don't have a graphical interface for it. And I suspect, if I don't actually know this for certain, it doesn't say in the manual, but I think it's an identical copy of whatever is visible in this page. And the reason I say that is because the manual describes the, the visible oscillator as the master and the hidden oscillator as the slave. But if I increase this hard sync slider, can you see these brutal straight lines? That's where the oscillator shape is, is being redrawn as a result of a trigger from this second master oscillator. Now that is something that I would expect to see out of the slave oscillator. So I can't absolutely say for sure, but I think the, the hard sync oscillator is always an exact replica uh, of whatever the master oscillator is. Anyway, the bottom line is that we get this brutal, nasty, brash, harsh sound that's absolutely reminiscent of kind of late 70s, early 80s synthesizers when they all had this, this switch. It was like a really in vogue thing to do. You get this really unique. There's no other process in synthesis that gets you a sound like that. It's got to be generated by a hard sync option. Now the next control that we're going to have a look at, I'm going to ignore analog for the moment and look at phase next. And the easiest way to demonstrate phase is firstly to get us back to a nice simple sawtooth. Now phase can't be demonstrated with the use of a single wave. You need at least two because phase is all about identifying the relationship between multiple waves and you can't have a relationship if you've only got one wave. So what I'm going to do is copy the layer, copy layer, select layer B, paste, and I've just created an exact copy of layer A. We've now got two copies of this wave. Now we won't go too deep into this, but what's actually going to happen as things stand at the moment is that if I turn both of those layers on at the same time, the volume is going to double but the shape of the wave will remain identical. So I can demonstrate this by pressing a note. I'm going to turn all of the velocity sensitivity off. And for reasons that will become apparent very soon, I'm going to turn this knob all the way down as well. So there's a really simple sawtooth wave playing at minus 29.2. When I bring the second identical sawtooth wave in, bring its controls down this sound is going to be twice as loud and a doubling of volume means an increase of six decibels. I've actually done a video on decibels. I'll put a link somewhere. So we'll see minus 23.2 here. And there it is. So far, so good. Two identical waves completely overlaid over the top of each other. And that simply results in a doubling of volume, but the shape of the wave itself is completely unaffected, just louder. Now, I'm going to increase the phase of layer B by a little bit. 0 0.1, there or thereabouts. Watch what happens to the shape of the wave now that I've done that. And the sound, you'll hear it. See all these holes? oscillator as well behind the shapes changed that's called a comb filter now I've actually done a video on comb filtering as well so I'll stick a link to that somewhere it's a little tricky to describe phase in 30 seconds but I'll try if phase is set to zero basically every single time you press a key the wave begins drawing at the very beginning here where my cursor is 
as I increase this phase knob, it begins drawing this wave later on. That's all it means, start from a different position. So what we did when we made layer B slightly out of phase is that we offset those two waves. Every position of this phase knob gives you a different, let's uh, take the loudness away, comb filtering effect. It's called a comb because it literally looks like the teeth of a comb with all of these sculpted bits being cut out of the wave. So phase is a really dramatic like sonic tool available to us and it also has a part to play in this analog knob over here because what analog does is try to reintroduce a little bit of the chaos that was in the analog synthesizer world and the two chaotic things that most typified an analog synthesizer were the fact that oscillators were never in phase with each other and they were never exactly the same pitch and this knob basically introduces that element of randomness that we hear when we play multiple waves together. So as I increase this analog knob, first of all, it introduces a, a phase change up to 50%. I, I'm not entirely sure it's exactly 50%. It seems to be like more in the 40s to my, to my ears. And then it starts introducing pitch variance as well. And when the pitch variance um, comes to the party, you'll see in Insight these movements in the wave as basically the two waves are now in motion against each other because they're not in the same pitch. There we go. So I'm not at 50% there. I'm at 45% but we've started introducing pitch variants here. And now it's really quite intense. So if you want that randomness that you get from analog instruments, the, the title on the knob is exactly right. That's what it does. And I think that'll do us for today. We've had a good introduction to the synth oscillator. We've got a, an idea of what these master sliders do and the two knobs underneath. So now we've got an already impressive array of different sounds available to us. We've got this vast wavetable, each one of those waves capable of sounding completely unique all on its own. And then when we start morphing between the different waves in each of those tables, hopefully that gives you a little insight into why Omnisphere is so powerful and is capable of generating so many incredible sounds. It's because right down at the very heart of the, of the machine, it's, it's superbly implemented with really deep, rich feature sets. In the next video, we'll hop over to the sample oscillator, the other fundamental sound source in Omnisphere, and we'll have a look at how it generates sound. Hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching.